everyone, and welcome back to Resident Evil Village. During the last episode, we sought refuge at Luigi's house, and unfortunately, her house kind of got set on fire. And then it kind of got attacked by a man that we were helping, turned into a werewolf, which then, which was the reason that the fire started to begin with, and he, he basically tore everybody apart before the fire could get to them, but then, you know, his daughter Elena was helping us, and then he, he, everybody's dead, basically. She fell into the fire, he fell into the fire. We're all fucked. We are dead. All right. But we continue forward nonetheless, because while depressed, we are resilient, I think. Yeah, that sucks. All that just to get a screwdriver, by the way. That's one hell of a demon face. That is a shame. Who's there? Oh, stop! Mother Miranda! Hey! Oh. <laughs> who, who was... What was that? things out here. Okay. I was in here, I came out, he was killed there. He had a shotgun. Damn it. Either she killed him and took the shotgun or... God's sake, this entire place. everybody doing if you're hearing this then this is the uh, after recorded audio of my voice um have to be real honest here uh, may come as a surprise but uh, after I had paused the game I had turned my microphone off because I had some personal business to organize and sort however when I came back to the game I forgot to unmute the mic so the entire time I was talking Turns out uh, nothing was being picked up. So, rather than letting the game just be quiet or anything like that, I'm going to actually just do a little recording audio over this. You know, give my own uh, afterthought perspective on the whole situation as I watch what uh, past me did, as it were. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be skipping over some of this silent, this sort of like this pause because I think I was up and away for a decent chunk of time. Uh, yeah, we will uh, We'll do that, though, then, you know. So, be back in a second. Yep. So, as we start things off here, I basically just stood in the field for a bit and took a decent walk down. 
started trying to hop over things and get my bearings on the whole situation. Noticed the old woman over there in the distance and was like, What the fuck is her deal? Oh, Jesus Christ. Death. <laughs> yes. Death has visited them all. <laughs> <laughs> In honesty, I was trying to see if I could hit her or not. Uh, of course, I could not. Shame. <laughs> and then, of course, she just kind of stands there forever, and I was just left to wonder, like, what the fuck is your deal? Honestly, lady. Hmm. So I started to try to figure out where to go to next. I was curious about some of the lockpicking stuff. But I had to go back into the church, at least. That's why I started reading some of the stuff here. Uh, February 9th, morning, Louisa's house. I found survivors huddled together at Louisa's house. I think she's the bigwig here, but then one of them turned into those creatures. He slaughtered everyone there. I get it. These monsters are villagers, and the villagers are dead. I now know two things. That I'm the only one left, and Rose might be in the castle. So that's where I'm going next. Uh, so, the basically, I was just reading over, you know, the... the big important stuff that we already know, that obviously, since this is Resident Evil, monsters don't just come out of nowhere, they're, they're made from people, essentially. So I tried to look over, tried to look over the shrine, figure out what was going on with that. Couldn't figure anything out again. So, of course, I had to just kind of think over what we were doing next. Was there anything I left behind? Was there anything I could look at? Uh, stuff, stuff like that. I noticed that the one house there wasn't cleared yet, so I wanted to go back and actually get it cleared, get it sorted. Of course, I went the way with the door, you know, the... That door... Six-winged door. Took one decent look at the Scarecrow. <clears throat> to be real with you guys here, uh, whenever I see this game, I, I am basically drawn to, like, Bloodborne, kind of, or like a Dark Souls-esque game. In honesty, because even that scarecrow there looks like the one boss figure from the game Father Gascoin, and Heisenberg himself actually kind of reminds me of a Bloodborne character, literally, down to the very unique hammer that he had. Um, which I will say, uh, spoiler alert, kind of, we will be seeing the four heads of the households in this episode, which is. Also, why it is quite a shame that we don't really get any audio here. Really, really does suck. I was still trying to figure out different places to go to, what places I was still allowed to go to, and what I'd have to figure out on my own. My logic at the moment here is it's important just to have two med kits, because what's the worst that can happen? Better off to save your healing remedies, uh, like your just everything. Trying to save all of your resources for those really bad, really tough moments. And I finally used the demon face, which was pretty easy to put in. Because, you know, it was already set up. I'm not sure why that had to be a puzzle. Now, 
Now, one thing I hadn't realized until a lot later in the story, unfortunately, was the fact that you could actually shoot the crows to get money. That's a fun fact. I was trying to search this river for some kind of secret. Uh, there are no secrets in this river, by the way. At least not until quote-unquote later. It's not, not even really a secret, to be honest. It's just uh, general things changing when you revisit the area, but uh, that's uh, that's something for later. I hadn't been sure what exactly to expect upon entering the castle, but I was sure I was going to be getting a lot more leeway into the whole situation. Because... I saw the door over there, and then I saw the fruit and all the other barrels and stuff, and then, hey, a switch, I thought. Let, well, let, let's well. pull this. Oh, who are you? I was thinking, Didn't here's think Heisenberg. You must be pretty tough. Huh. Real charismatic. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, you're not local. Even better. I didn't realize what was about to happen. <laughs> and then that happened. <laughs> And then I realized, holy shit! Mother Miranda's gonna love you. This man's a metal bender! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh God! <laughs> Pain. It's weird that he... Whining. We're almost there. It's weird to say, looking back on this, the fact that he is a metal bender, has some real strong power over metal of some kind, and yet he cannot drag me with the metal. He kind of just drags me with a chain. The man is of no real use to anyone else, and my daughters do so love entertaining foreigners. Uh. Furthermore, I can assure you if you entrust the mortal to House Dimitrescu. My daughters and I will deliver to you the finest Why, ugly? I want to see! You mean... He's awake! You mean... Brother, shut the fuck up! What? Where? You mean you'll screw around with him in private, and where's the fun in that? Give him to me, and I'll put on a show that everybody can enjoy. Ugh, so gauche. What do we care for bread and circuses? The man thing's suffering is assured. Yeah, gag, yeah, if a man's dick is cut off in the castle, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've heard all your arguments. Some of you were less persuasive than others, but I've made my decision. Heisenberg, the man's fate is in your hands. Mother Miranda, I must protest. Heisenberg is but a child, and his devotion to you is questionable. Give the mortal to me, and I will ensure he is ready. Shut your damn hole! And don't be a sore loser! Go find your food somewhere else. Quiet now, child. Adults are talking. I'm the child. You're the one who's arguing with Miranda's decision. You wouldn't know responsibility if it was welded oh, to Oh, keep growing! Hammer. One day your head might actually fit your ego! Fight, fight, hey, fight, don't fight, I get a fight, say in this? Silence! <laughs> My decision is final. Remember from whence you came. Thank you. Ha. Lycans and gentlemen, we thank you for winning. And now let the games begin. Let's see what you have here. Ethan Winters. Get ready. No, wait! <laughs> And then it was at this point I was finally starting to talk again, <laughs> freaking out about the werewolves and everything. And of course, I was basically complaining about why Ethan wasn't just jumping into the hole until the last second! I mean, come on, man. And it was time to run. Jesus Christ! Wasn't gonna stick around and stare at the scenery, obviously. Pretty quick on the trigger, to be honest. Very nice, even. 
And from up above came that son of a bitch. Break the hell out of me. And that's when I was dropped into this trap. You're still alive? Oh, shit. And that's when this trap activated. Now, the, my, my problem was, in the moment, I was thinking, okay, maybe there's an item I need to pick off the ground. Maybe there's something I need to be aware of. I wasn't really looking at my surroundings. I was just staring at the thing dropping. Not the smartest idea I ever made. And I kept thinking, okay, maybe there's something over here. Maybe there's something over there. What am I missing? I'm about to die. Hey, guys, could you let me out? Oh, no! Death. It was a very unfortunate sequence of events. Uh, then I no, also Jesus discovered Christ. that each time I died during this That's sequence, Run for your life. Uh, always you always start there. So at some point, there's going to be another death ahead of, uh, unfortunately, very annoyingly. Uh, once that happens, I will very skip that nice. because it'll be even farther down the line, and it will start you at the very beginning. So for now, here we go, Mr. Uh, Wolfman here. Wolfman Jones smacks us with a hammer. Everything starts to fall underneath us. And then we fall down the pit of despair again into the trap. You're still alive? In So of course I have to, I'm starting to try to think things over for a decent minute. I'm just like, okay, what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? And then I just saw that and I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Shit. And of course there was a lot more lichens and traps. You truly are as strong as they say. Yeah, not really. I did, I wasn't, uh, might be strong, but I wasn't smart. I saw those boxes. I thought I could go grab them. And, uh, as they were getting destroyed, I figured that it was a good idea to try to pick them up as the boxes got destroyed rather than focusing on my own life with that trap. And, of course, once this uh, loads back in, you'll see the problem I was facing. It started at the very beginning. Jesus Christ! So, gonna just skip ahead for a second and save us all the, uh, all the time. My word. You truly are as strong as they say. And oh, here we are again. And of course, stupid me keeps thinking that I can go pick the things up. So now it's time for the and I started freaking out, and then last minute saw that little hole in the wall. And, oh boy. It was a real close one there. Now wasn't it? Yeah, Heisenberg's quite the comedian, as you can see. Too close. Wait, do those freaks have Rose? Now, of course, I did not realize at all that uh, you could just pick the items up after the whole shredder thing was done. So, there was my whole thing. And the realization... Went walking down the way, trying to figure out my way through life and these tunnels. Realized the door closed behind me. That wasn't fun. I kept seeing a lot of dead bodies and a lot of traps, and I was thinking to myself, Well, shit, everything's gonna come to life here. I'm gonna freak out, I'm gonna run like hell. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, none of the traps ever activated, so I was freaking out for no reason. 
But uh, it's still a good bit of suspense, honestly. And I was let out at the same exact point as I was captured. So trying to jiggle that door would have been pretty pointless anyways. But I figured I'd had to go finish the job anyway when it came to pulling that lever. So there I went. And so, when I was free, I gazed upon a crap ton of dead bodies and a lot of cold winter. Pew! Those bodies, you know. Picking up some herbs. And this is where we meet the boy. Uh, uh, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Winters. How do you know my name? Anyone who is anyone has heard of the likes of you. A hero searching for his daughter. Though I must say, that castle arouses suspicion. Yeah, and so do you. <laughs> I am but a humble merchant. Here? Oh, forgive my manners. Call me the Duke. Now to business. Weapons, ammunition, healing salves, anything you desire, I can provide. And so we meet the Duke. Now, I do remember mentioning and talking about how his mannerisms, the way he presents himself, his girth, it reminds me a lot of this series called Monk, and he reminds me of a villain on the show called Biterbeck. More of a nicer, jollier version, though, of uh, the Biterbeck guy. I was actually half, uh... Welcome, Ethan. I was kind of teetering on whether or not to call him the Duke or Biterbeck, but I settled on just calling him Duke, just because. Good character. It's when I started understanding that everything in your inventory has a price. So you can sell your weapons and stuff like that to get money. Ah. Now, at the time, I was debating about whether or not I should upgrade any pieces or parts to my weapon. But in the end, I mostly just decided that it would be best to... Uh, save my money. Because I was trying to think about, you know, what investments I could make in the future. However, I just eventually decided that saving my money mo would be better. That way I can buy a number of things at the same time and really notice a difference, Maybe since I was surviving as is pretty okay. Pretty okay, despite getting murdered at least once or twice, of course.
This is all an investment, even. I was really considering my purchases very carefully, of course. What are you buying? <laughs> Just something an old friend of mine used to say. And that's the part that really got me kind of stuck in my tracks a little bit and got me laughing and chuckling and then theorizing was the fact that he apparently knows the Resident Evil 4 merchant. A good deal, if I say so myself. And I just kept thinking, how the hell do those two know each other? Jesus. They're both equally mysterious entities, too. Always appearing at random locations. Just... Oh, always being friends to you too, selling you all the things you need in order to survive. And this is where we enter the mansion, the castle of fucking de Look, let's face the music here for the next couple of videos. I debated what name to even call her because I could not pronounce her original name. So I just basically settled on Dimmy in the end. So just know that I am canonically calling her Dimmy. Despite all my failures and attempts to say her name in the next couple of episodes, this is future future me talking. So just remember, Dimmy. Uh, Rednick, delivery of one male, three females, Mother Miranda, meeting with Mistress Dimmy. Uh, the Duke business discussion. So the Duke, surprisingly as well, just... He is not just an entity to you, he is an entity to the enemies as well. He is... He's just a random person. That's just the way it goes. Which got me really curious as well. It's like, you know, what business discussions could they be doing with the Duke? You know, what does the Duke provide them? I don't know who Rednick is either, to be honest. Uh, so that'll be a mystery. Also figured out that almost everything in Dimmy's castle is basically destructible. Some of it will yield items, some of, it, some of it won't. I also did not realize that the door had shut behind me, and a giant gate closed behind it as well. I hadn't noticed that until much later. So, crazy times, am I right? Try to hit the button to the elevator. Of course, that didn't work. And it was to my understanding that the castle may have been either, like, getting renovated and other such, or something along those lines. But it was pretty opulent and nice-looking. As soon as you enter, everything's encrusted and engraved with gold, basically. It feels like the area that you should go to at the end of the game, one of the final levels. So it's cl it's it's really, really a surprise to see that this is like the first level, not just the village. Looking at everything curiously, in all of its detail, of course. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was the ultimate nope moment that I had there. I think I just literally kept saying nope, 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 nope. So I kept backing up and trying to get the hell out of there. Then I had to face the music. That that was pretty much the way I had to go. I had no choice. My plan, originally, was to turn around and take a look at some of the other rooms and try to figure out how all that stuff went. Um, of course, the big door with the words on it had me real curious, though. And I found out the hard way that, uh, that was not the... that wasn't the smartest decision. <laughs> yeah. Major uh-ohs.
If it's big and shiny, don't view it first. And there goes my ship. Man blood. Psychos. And there goes my other shin. In the moment, I was also trying to memorize the layout of the halls, trying to figure out how I was going to get out and through this. Not a smart thing to do. Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> yeah, and of course, here's Dimmy herself, yeah. Mrs. X, the tall lady. Well, well, Ethan Winters. Oh, you shit! my little brother's idiot games, did you? Let's see how special you are. <laughs> yes, mother. Yes, mother. <laughs> it's one of those moments where you basically just go, Oh no, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> and of course, her first reaction is to eat and drink my blood. Hmm. Uh, starting to go a little stale. Then let's devour his man flesh quickly, mother. But I am the one who captured him. Now, now, daughters. First, I must inform Mother Miranda. But later, well, there will be enough for everyone. Budama! <laughs> yeah, and this is where I was like, oh! Oh no! Oh, there goes my hands! Wait, what's happening? Oh hey, I'm taller than you! Isn't that nice? Oh, what you wish for, Ethan Winters. <laughs> And then they exited the room. What are you doing? Many bad times ahead. Now she was just showing off. And it was at this point that I realized that I was kind of stuck here. Obviously, I could just uh, pull my hand out from those metal sickles that are sticking through my hands, those hooks holding me up. However, I decided to take this as a moment for Ethan to reflect on everything and understand how fucked up this entire situation was. I was really going for, like, the big monologue. But, of course, the episode ends here. Really come back. Yeah, yeah. But this is it for the episode. Thank you for listening to this after audio. And I wish you all the best of luck. See you in the next episode. Bye-o.